Okay, today we're going to talk about eyes. I'm going to do some free measurements here just to line things up. The eyes, you would think that an eye would be equal on the top and the bottom. Like the shape would be kind of like a football. If you ran a line through the middle of it, you would think that this half would mirror this half, but that's not true with the shape of the eye. It actually is a little bit bigger at the top, a little wider, and that center line is a little is definitely lower. So it's more like it's more like this than it is that. Okay, so just keep that in mind as you're going along because you're going to want to revert back to what you think the eye looks like, but the shape of it, especially this, um, the tear duct of the eye is a lot lower than you expect. It's a lot lower. So as with most drawings, I like to do some measurements, kind of lay things out. I'm going to put a little dot at the corner of the eye on the right. I'm going to put a little dot at the corner of the eye on the left here. I might as well just do all the corners here. Do that corner on the inside. Don't forget the tear duct. So there's the tear duct. I'm going, if I were going to put a little measuring line, it'd be at the tear duct right here, not here. Okay, that's important. I can, I can make a mark at the tear duct and then where the tear duct ends and the white of the eye begins. As you can see, it's this much space. So those are my marks. I'm going to bring them over here. And I put little dots, my reference dots. Okay. I'm doing the outline of the eye. Ignore this part of the eye, meaning start the outline a little farther up than you think. It should start where you see the bottom of the eye, unless the eye is really wide open. Let me explain that a little bit better. So this is where I outlined the lid the top, this is the top part of the lid, this is the bottom part of the upper lip, upper lid, this is the line for the bottom lid, the top of the bottom lid, and then, then the bottom of the bottom lid <laughs> is right here. Okay, and I, I made sure I went around the tear duct here, and put a little line in for where the white of the eye starts. Okay, and then the pupil of the eye, this is very deceiving for most people, but the pupil is going to be in the center of what would be a completed sphere. And I'll tell you, I'll explain that in just a moment. I'm going to move it over here. Okay. You need to treat the shape of this, of the eyeball, the iris, of the iris. You want to treat that as a circle, a complete circle. So unless the eye is really wide open, which doesn't happen with most people, you can't see the white above the iris and the top, unless someone's scared or uh, they just are like that. Um, so this line would continue to make a sphere all the way around. So the sphere of the iris if you were, it, it goes underneath the upper lid. It's tucked underneath the upper lid. If you were to continue drawing the sphere as if the lid were not there, it would be like that. Okay, so you need to keep that in mind that when you're drawing the eyeball, the iris, it's a perfect sphere. It just gets tucked underneath the upper lid. Okay, and then this pupil, your pupil should be in the center of 
that circle, this completed circle of the iris, meaning the red line and then the black line. This should be in the center. And if I can do, if you take away the red, it would it would look like this black dot of the pupil is not quite in the center because there's less space here than there is there. So I made my little marks and I'm going to go ahead and put in the shape of the eyes. It will end up looking like this, the outline. be helpful to put a horizontal line for yourself so make sure that the eyeballs sorry your uh, outline for the eyes are at the same level so just draw a nice light line for yourself mine is a little darker just so you guys can see it because I felt like I was going a little too high with this one so and I put a reference line in. Always put reference lines in if you're confused. You can always erase them as long as you haven't pressed too hard, of course. Okay, I'm gonna check my shape. Pretty good. A little bit more open over here. You guys can do this with plastic wrap at home if you don't have a clear plastic sheet for yourself. Or there's probably some sort of clear packaging that you might have that you can use. Some some product that has a clear like a clear box that you can cut out part of the one of the sides to make yourself a little clear sheet. I'm gonna go with that for right now. I'm gonna draw the iris and the pupil. You wanna make sure that your sphere for the iris it has to be a sphere, so it can't go straight up. If your line ends up going straight up, that's wrong because then it would be like that. Okay, and our eyeballs aren't square at the top. So make sure that you curve around. It has to curve around. So this should curve back up and underneath the lid. How much that pupil, or sorry, the iris is tucked underneath that top lid is it's determined by how open the person's eyes are. Okay. Gonna erase this reference line right now because I don't really need that anymore. Looks pretty good. Probably can make this a little skinnier in here. Not as bulbous. Not as round there. And that one looks pretty good. It's just not as round right there. I normally wouldn't be using the clear plastic sheet, but I just want to show you guys what to do if you do have that tool with you somewhere at home. I do want to check some more measurements, like I want to check the size of the iris, irises, make sure they're pretty equal. This one looks like it's a little too big, so I'm just going to make that a little skinnier, make them a little bit more equal. So I don't want one iris to be bigger than the other. 
these are things you can fix now and if you don't fix them now it's a little more difficult later especially when you're finished and you're like oh no I, that's not that eyeball's too big and that eyeball's too small and what am I gonna do that will shift my pupil a little bit so I'll just move it over okay moving on from there I'm gonna do the line for the upper lid on each side. Think of it like a mountain. It should go, this line should go farther than the tear duct. So it should end up, it starts farther over too, it's around here. And it should end farther over. Like that. Same thing for this side. Of course, not everybody, people, most people are not symmetrical in any regard. So if there, <laughs> if there is a difference in the lids, the size of them, then you got to go with it because that's, that's how they look. We're not symmetrical. We're just perfectly fine. All right. So there I go. Let's see how I did. Pretty good. Not too bad. This will probably curve down a little bit more. Now I know you want to go in and press really hard for those pupils right now, but you can go in a little bit. But that shape might change for you and there might be a reflection on top of that pupil that you need to pay attention to. So if there is a reflection somewhere in the pupil, you need to outline it. If there's a little white spot, you want to outline the white area and then shade around it so that you don't have to go in reverse. It's going to be harder if you press, more difficult if you press really hard and then you try to erase out that white highlight. So now we're going to shade and make these things look more realistic. Eyelashes are tricky things. Eyelashes, especially if someone's wearing mascara, the eyelashes will stick together more. If my fingers were eyelashes, they would kind of stick certain spots. And that's what's happening here. You'll see the eyelashes are sticking here and sticking there. They just look thicker in spots. If there's no mascara, then they're a little more separate. So for eyelashes, because we're actually going to do that first, and then we'll get into the uh, filling in the, in the iris. They travel along this line. This is where they grow, right here. This line. Not from this top line. This line is where they come out from. And the first thing I want to do is just shade a little bit along that line. Because it is, it does need to have a little bit of a value, a general gray. It needs to be a little thicker in that spot before I put the hairs on. So I'm going to do that for the left eye and the right eye. I might just pressure a little harder because it is dark in that area. I'm going to change up my pencil. I'm going to go to 3B, see what that looks like. It seems like it's more what I want for a value. When I shade the upper lid, the bottom of the upper lid, what we're doing. I want to sort of ignore all the little lines for the eyelashes right now and just shade it how thick I see that dark area. Okay? So it's harder to fill in spaces than it is just to lay down that first layer, <clears throat> excuse me, of that value underneath the eyelashes. Okay. Now I'm going to get to it. So the eyelashes at the corner of your eyes will fan out in this direction. 
they all go that way and then as they continue along that line as they continue they come towards you so they go from going out like this to going a little farther up like that and then about here is when they come at you and then over here they start going this way for the most part and then sometimes you don't see, really see them anymore on this side okay you do see them more at the corners okay when you are putting in the eyelashes think about it like you're building them from like you're actually putting them in physically putting them in to this line the shaded line and don't think too much about it most people will make them look too fake or too weird by just sort of doing this and then it, all these lines have equal spaces between them and that's not natural even if you don't have any mascara on you will have some clumping of your eyelashes so they kind of there's like three eyelashes in one spot it's more like it's, it's more like this That has like two or three that build up in the same area or like this they all converge to the same spot these two lines like they moved the distance between them moved equally but they all kind of converged okay you might want to practice this a couple times first before you're working on the portrait that you're going to do this is of course one of your practices so i'm going to build up the lines where I see them the most. Pay attention to what it looks like. Okay. So I'm going to start putting them in going this way. Oh, and the other thing about eyelashes is you press, you put your pencil down where you think one's going to be. And then you push hard and then soft. I'm pushing hard on the spot that I'm making an eyelash. Push hard and then soft. Hard, soft. It's called feathering. So it's very, very, it's much lighter here than it is down here. And that's what you want to make sure that you do. And be kind of random about it. Don't think too much about it. You're building them up. They get a little bit, they're longer looking here and then shorter in the middle because that's where they're coming directly at you. You know what I should have done first is shade the top lid before I put the eyelashes on. So that's just a really good example of what not to do. So you are going to shade, give give a value to that lid. I got ahead of myself. Give a value to that upper lid before you put the eyelashes on. And it's going to be a little bit lighter in the middle, so it gets a little bit lighter around. Oh, you can't really see that one. It gets a little bit lighter when you're in the middle. I'm going to choose an H pencil to do this. And then I'll just go a little bit lighter as I get to the center there. And if I went too dark, you have your needable eraser that you can make a little point out of like this and just touch down where you know that it's, I mean, it shouldn't be as dark as it is. So I just lightened up that area. I didn't take away all of the graphite, just a little bit because it's lighter in the center and darker on the sides of that lower lid. I'm going to go back to my 3B pencil. I might choose something a little darker. Let's go 4B.
You do want to choose a pencil that's sharpened for sure for this. Just gonna darken up that area behind the eyelashes real quick. Just a little bit. And then I'll redefine some of the lashes. Lashes will look very strange to you after a while. But try to draw what you see. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it just doesn't has to not look weird. And how you make it not look weird is you just take your time. My lashes got a little too long right here, so all I gotta do is erase it. I'm gonna take the 5B pencil that I have, 4B, whatever, and I will darken the iris, sorry, the pupil. This person's eyes are brown, so they're pretty dark already, but people with lighter eyes when we'll go through how to draw an eye that has that is a lighter color eye has a lot more texture within it and I definitely want you guys to see that video but this is just the video of how to draw both eyes so I'm gonna go all eyes will have this all eyes all irises will be darker at the edges of the eye a little bit darker and then a little bit lighter or a lot lighter on the inside and since these are probably darker eyes they the value is close. The two values, the value of the outside of the sphere of the iris and inside are close but noticeably different. So I'm just gonna stay with the shape. My shading go follows along the sphere. I want to just shade back and forth straight like this because that's just gonna flatten the shape out. You want to make this look three-dimensional. I do see a highlight. There's a highlight right here. What I'm going to do is actually outline that lightly, not really hard. I know it touches touches the pupil, so it's about right here. I'm going to leave that as it is, and I'm going to sh keep shading. I'm going to check out the gray that I made for the eye. Put my pencil on the left and a pencil on the actual thing I shaded, and I know that these are not the same gray value. I need to go darker. So I can go darker with, with the pencil that I have, or I can take an HB and just use that. It's about layers when you're using graphite pencil. So it's not just go really hard and press hard right away, it's put it down, put your gray down with the pencil, see if that's dark enough, and if it's not, do it again. And if it's not, do it again light. And then you're adding all these light pressure filling, you're filling in with light pressure over top of another light pressure layer of your dark pencil. And what happens is that it gets darker slower, which is what you want. I'm gonna continue to just bump up the contrast on that outer ring. And then what I'm gonna do is, because all eyes will have some texture into it. It's kind of like a sun. So I have little squigglies that build up and go towards the center of the eye. Or you can kind of squiggle going out. But I usually squiggle going in because it's darker. I'm pressing harder at that edge of the circle and then squiggle going in. Then it's going to look darker on the edges and then lighter as you go in. This is going to, we're going to go over this on another video. But for now, since these are brown eyes, then I'm just gonna take my darker pencil and make these kind of squiggles inside of here so that there is a little bit of texture within the eye. Okay, then I'm gonna take a look at the shape of what I have so far. And I feel as if this part bumps out a little bit too much 
compared to over here because I was redefining the dark line. So I'm just gonna shave off a little bit of this. Of course, that's all disturbing when you're talking about eyes and shaving, but there we go. I feel like that's a little bit better. Okay, getting better, right? Now I'm gonna go to the bottom lid and I'm gonna start shading there. So, I'm gonna take, I gotta shade before, I gotta shade, put my shade, my value down before I start putting any lit, any um, eyelashes on. So I'm gonna use an H pencil and take my time while I'm shading. When you do your portraits, they're gonna be smaller they're not gonna be, you're not gonna draw something five times the size, a person the five, five times the size that they are. So you don't necessarily need your blender, but if you feel like you need to use it for the lighter areas, you can. Or you can just take your time and go back and forth. Go over the little white gaps that you might see. Change your pressure in certain spots to make it look even. So I'm just going to speed up this part of the video. Okay. So I put that lighter gray behind, actually above the upper lid and, and below the lower lid. And I'm going to take a look back at the photo that I have. And I do notice that I need to go a little darker in places. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the same pencil or I can go up a pencil in darkness. I'll go to an HB. And I can see that the shadowy area comes, starts about here and then continues this way. And there's a little line. There's a little, well, it's not a line. It's a line, quote unquote. Okay. So there's a darker area spot right there and then it jumps. There's a light area and then there's a dark area. Again, dark-ish. So I'm going to put that in first because uh, if I don't do that now and then I put my lashes in then it's just harder to put the shadow back there first or afterwards. So I made the first kind of still shadow area and then I'm going to jump I'm going to skip put another little, little little shadow area under there so it looks like there looks like there's some lines down there but they're not they're just um, different values of gray I'm gonna take my sharpened pencil again sharp pencils for eyelashes don't use dull pencils and I'm going to build up the lashes here at the bottom. What you're going to notice in most people, if not all, are that the lashes grow differently out of the bottom lid than they do the top lid. So I'm just going to put a little line. This would be the imaginary line of the bottom lid. It needs to, you need to jump down a little bit and start your lashes underneath that lower lid line. I was just about to say a hair under, but we're talking about hair right now. So I'm gonna build the lower lashes from just below the edge of that, top edge of that lower lid. Practice eyelashes. Again, I'm pushing a little harder at first then lifting my pressure up as I go. They come towards me more as they get to the center. The lower lid lashes are smaller and lighter usually. Like I get over to this side and I can barely see them, but they're still there. I gotta put them in. And they also clump together at certain spots. I'm gonna start building up those lashes with my sharpened pencil. They're not starting from the top of that shaded area because that's where the lower lid starts. I have to go underneath it just a little bit. So I'm starting here. I'm 
I do notice that it does get kind of darker along here and then lighter. So I'm just going to add some little dark dots as I go right in here. No one's going to look at your actual eyeball, so they're not going to say, oh, those, there's no hairs over there. If you make hairs up in that spot, that's okay. And I'm going to go lighter as I get to the right. What I'm going to do is actually just, I'm going to move this. I'm going to cut this up a little bit. Or tear it. You know. I'm going to move the eyeball that I'm drawing over. Because that's what we're focusing on. So this is the eye that I'm drawing. What you'll notice is that, whoa, when you start shading everything that you've shaded so far, the white of the eye looks too white, because it's true. The, the whites of our eyes are not perfectly white. They're also kind of grayish. So I'm going to add some value with my H pencil first. In the photo, I see shadow here, some shading, and then because this is the edge of the white of the eye, and then this is the tear duct, so there's like this little in between space before I get to the tear duct. So I'm going to stop shading to that right next to that space, like that, and then I'll jump over to the tear duct. You're going to notice that when you put down a certain gray value that the space, the spot next to it now needs to bump up its value. It needs to get darker. The shadow area here extends up. So it comes from here and it continues up. Just gonna press a little harder with the H pencil as I get underneath that. If I go underneath that upper lid, that's kind of where the lid hangs over the eye. So the white of the eye in that area at the top right here will be a little bit darker. And especially over here, you'll see it more. So I'm gonna switch up my pencil to a B. I'm gonna make, since this side does look darker to me, I'm gonna shade I put some value in here that's a little bit darker than the other side. So I need a B pencil. I'm gonna fuzz it out, blend it together so it's not doesn't look like a stripey kind of line. Okay. I think they pretty good. I think I need to extend my eyelashes a little bit down because they come down to about here and mine go directly out to the side. So mine on my drawing end where my pencil is right now. So I need to just sort of extend them. And if I go back over some of the stuff, actually what I'm going to do is I lost this upper lid line, the shadow area, because I was shading above it. So I'm going to redefine it, put it back in a little bit, and it's dark. It's not just, a, not just an outline that you put in, you need to fuzz it away. So especially here, I don't see it very, it's very fuzzy. I want to make sure that I, that I shade fuzzy. Wherever it's clear, like in here, I can press and not fuzz away, but then I need to start fuzzing and blending, aka blending. where I see it's not as, where it's not as defined. I'm actually going to bump up the contrast a little bit here, make this a little bit darker, and then make that spot a little darker right there. And then in here I'm going to take the 5B and just darken a little bit, the lower lash area, like that. I got my 6B, bring the 6B out. I'm just going to make this your drawing is 
when you're looking at a, a print, like this is a printout, so the, the black is more saturated. It's, it's ink, it's black ink. Ink versus graphite pencil. So the pencil's never gonna be as dark as the printout. So I'm just gonna darken the eye just a little bit more so that the iris kind of fades in. Eyebrows are similar to eyelashes in the way that they grow from, from a certain area. Eyelashes grow out from that line for the lid and eyebrows grow from wherever the, all the hairs start from. So I'm gonna take a sharpened pencil. I'm gonna start with this eyebrow hair, way over here. It starts here and the eyebrow hair, eyebrow hair goes all the way over there. And there's also eyebrow hairs that build up over here. It's fun. I'm gonna start there, extend. Press hard at first, and then go light. And I keep building that up. When we get to someone's hair, this is the same thing. It's almost like you're just adding hairs. You're putting the hairs on someone's head. Right now I'm putting the, hair, the eyebrow hairs on them. And I start making the shape of that eyebrow. Okay. I did it the same kind of gray value. Now I'm gonna go back in and press harder at certain spots and kind of jump around. And that's how I make it look a little more realistic, as if it has some darker hairs and some lighter hairs. And some random hairs. There's a random hair. And then there's hair that hairs that actually grow this way, that are lighter. And I would continue to shade. This would look definitely less weird if I had shaded underneath it first. So I'll just put some shading down so that that looks a little bit better. Like this. I'm not done with this yet, but that's the basically how you how you lay it out. Okay. I'm gonna go back in here and just make this a little bit darker. Press a little harder there. And then check my shadowy areas. I'm gonna put a little bit more of a shadow here. And then go back over, make my eyelashes a little darker. Maybe go over my eyelashes a bit there. The highlight's too bright now, so I'll take my H pencil and just lightly go over the top of it. There you go.